Guys, welcome back to my channel. We are eight weeks out from the New York Pro. If you're a new time viewer, thanks for tuning in. I am IFBB Pro John Jewett. I'm documenting my whole series for prepping for the New York Pro. And I have Matt Jansen, my coach. He's also giving updates on feedback on diet and training and how things are changing along the way and giving you all some insight into my training as well. So from last week, you know, I had a body weight low of 230.8 pounds. And since, since I talked to you all last time, I've had quite a few refeed days and Matt's gonna be explaining those, but uh, basically it was the same refeed I did a couple weeks ago. Uh, the addition of 100 and, was 180 grams of carbohydrates. And I did that for one day, and then day two, three, we had, Matt added an additional 60 grams of carbs, so a total of 240 grams of carbs in addition to what I'm normally doing. And, and so y'all can see it, I, I posted my diet below, my base plan, my normal plan. And this has been the, the base plan I've been following for, uh, gosh, I think it's been like five weeks now. Which, just to sum up, it's 190 grams of carbs, 350 grams of protein, and 30 grams of fat. So these refeed days, we're just adding those He's adding those carbohydrates on top of that amount. Um, but to sum up like just how I feel over the week, uh, for one, the big noticeable thing was sleep is starting to get a little bit more poor, poor quality. Um, start waking up just at like 6 a.m. every morning, just wide awake, ready to go, which is terrible because I'd rather sleep for like another hour or two hours. Um, so I do feel a little bit more just mentally bogged down, fatigued during the day. You can just tell like you're getting to those lower body fat percentages where sleep it gets, gets affected. But I will have my days like where I can catch up on sleep too and I can actually sleep in sometimes, but uh, for the most part that's dropping off. Performance wise in the gym though is holding really well. Uh, I've maintained strength really well and, and there's still been a couple lifts like the workout we'll show today. I think I only go up like uh, for the whole workout, I think I only improve like maybe one or two reps for the whole workout. <laughs> so I have like one exercise that I do a little bit better performance on. But still that goes to show you like I'm, I'm holding tissue very well and strength's maintaining. And those are things that we're looking for for performance and whether you know, we should be doing refeeds or not. Pump, as far as in the gym, and I think pump's a good indicator of how depleted someone is, it is, is, is more mild to moderate. Um, I get a slight pump, but it fades pretty quickly. But it's just par for the course. We're trying to drop a lot of weight, and that's just the way it needs to be. It's, a, it's okay to be flat. I know people are like, oh, I'm flat. I can't get much of a pump. Like, you need to be a little flat to get as lean as you can. So that's kind of been the state that I, I was in. And uh, so we did those three refeed days, which I'm, I'm pretty depleted. So my weight didn't really come up much. I went up to, I'm looking at it right now. Um, after the three refeed days, I came up to 230.2. And we started at 230.6. So actually my weight came down. Um, I think I had one day of the, of the refeed that it uh, it came up a tad, but for the most part, it's pretty much nearly nearly maintained. But then I hit a low of 228.6, so right on par for the course for dropping about two pounds a week. And so for the rest of the week, we're gonna keep cruising along in this normal base plan, and uh, ideally should be coming down another another couple pounds. Still, there's no cardio in place; just purely going off diet for a caloric deficit. And that's, that's it on my end. I mean, everything's going really well. For, for a prep, like, I, I feel great, like, at, with considering, you know, what, where we're at. Um, for body fat levels and how my energy and performance is, like, I feel really good. And for being eight weeks out, I, I, that that's feels great. Now, at some point, I'm not saying that, you know, I've been at the eight-week mark and just been, you feel like you're suffering. And at some point, we probably will get there. But uh, I feel like for how I feel, I'm able to keep a lot more fullness and just it's just a better looking physique. It's not all ragged out, which, uh, and it's holding my legs well. And, and speaking on my legs, like my left quad, the, the one that I injured, in here you can see, I'll post my pictures up here, you can see it. Um, my left quad is uh, looking a lot better. Like there's a lot of inflammation that was 
you know, water holding on their skin that's starting to dissipate, the skin's getting thinner there, and starting to see better lines in it too. So uh, I feel positive about it that it's going to be, you know, have good symmetry still. And just overall, like my chest is usually, people uh, give, me, <laughs> give me a lot of shit about my chest, like that it's lagging, but you know, I think it's, uh, you know, very balanced, this, this contest, uh, this prep. And so that's encouraging. Uh, I think I've made good improvements there. But I'll, uh, that's it on my end. I'll go ahead and pass it over to Matt. He can go over some, some, some updates on, on his part and also just uh, you know, the coaching process for us. And then we'll go into some ham and glute training. What's up, guys? John is eight weeks out this week, uh, and I want to touch on a few different things. One of the cool things for this prep so far for me is how different and how much John has progressed as an athlete um, in terms of his actual plan, like the variables that are intact with his plan. Um, you know, and I, I just actually mentioned it to him this week. It's like I'm prepping an entirely different athlete. And most of the times, that's not the case for most people. You know, even as they gain more tissue, a lot of the same trends and variables still exist. But with this prep so far with John, it's been very different. Um, you know, he's had several refeed days that end up being multiple days at a time. Um, obviously, one of the things that I wanted to talk about and correct was when we first started this series, I said I knew that John was somebody that needed to do cardio. Um, so that's why I went ahead and put it in early. Um, but thus far with this prep, uh, we've seen, you know, once I pulled the cardio out, we've still not had to reintroduce that. So it's been pretty cool to see how John's transitioned as an athlete, uh, which leads me to, for you guys, whether you're, you know, you're coaching or you're an athlete yourself, uh, communication is vitally important. And one thing that you can expect is for your communication to be as strong, you know, the first time you prep, you know, part of communication is growing relationally with somebody, whether that's, you know, becoming good friends or not, the longer that you are working in a relationship towards a goal, the better your communication is going to become. So, you know, this is our, um, we did two preps for USAs and then we did one pro show. And then, so this is our fourth prep so far. And, and I think every time it's just, we, we get a little bit more efficient. Uh, you know, John's very good at, at giving me the details that I need in terms of what matters, um, you know, he leaves out what doesn't matter, uh, you know, and the things right now that matter most are how his training is, obviously how he looks, um, and then any feedback that he has in terms of sleep, um, which his sleep has started to go down, which is also another sign of, you know, his body really starting to take off. So things are in a good spot. We actually did three refeeds this week, back-to-back -back days, um, and I learned a little bit more from those refeeds. I added in another 30 grams of carbs to his pre and post workout meal. So thus far, with his refeeds, four meals have been, I've added 30 grams of carbs to, and now his pre and post meal, I've added 60 grams of carbs to. And doing that for three days straight, he barely, I think we had a net gain of maybe 0.2 pounds. Um, so that showed me at this point that he's depleted enough that within further refeeds that I can start to bump his food up more. So we're gonna start doing that in the future. Um, you know, but overall, like I said, it's been a very, very good prep so far. Uh, and one, you know, something else too, guys, is like, I, I'm not pushing the fact that John's not doing cardio as a means of, oh, you know, if you work with me, you don't have to do cardio. It, this is a very rare thing. I think this is the one of the few times that, that, especially this early in a contest prep that I've completely pulled cardio, but I just trusted my gut there. Um, and thus far it's worked out well. So I'm not saying that we won't reintroduce it, you know, but if he's continuing to respond and continuing to lose about two, two and a half pounds a week without cardio, right now there's no need for it. Um, I set a goal for him basically to be around 224 pounds, uh, 226 to 224 at the six week out mark. Um, and he is right, he hit a low yesterday of 228.6, I believe. Um, so at eight weeks out, he's about two, two and a half pounds away from that goal. So he's right on track, um, continuing to do very well. You know, I can see his skin just continuing to get tighter. Um, so everything's going really, really well. So just continue to follow along. We will continue to put these videos out and I appreciate all the support. All right, what's up guys? We're at the Muscle Factory. I'm doing my ham, glute, and calf workouts. So I'm eight weeks out today. This morning I woke up, I was 229.2. So weight, weight's coming down. Uh, this is my second leg day of the week. Still splitting up quads and hams. Focus on this work is still trying to keep some good stimulus to glutes. So I'm just gonna start with glute bridges and get it going. 
it's not a typical bodybuilder work uh, exercise that you always see, but if you need to bring up glutes, I do think it's an excellent move to give, give a lot of stimulus to them and you get a lot of peak tension compared to doing squats or deadlifts, depending on how you execute the move. On glute bridges, just trying to keep a slightly wider than shoulder width stance, and you don't have to touch the ground. I'm just trying to get to full hip flexion before my lower back gets any curve to it, and then getting up to full hip extension and doing a slight pause at the very top. You have a hard glute contraction. I'll warm up, just do a, doing like a 45, keep adding on until I get up to first work set. Hit a set at eight to 10, then move on to doing like a set of 12 to 15 reps. I know a lot of guys are gonna say like, oh, you just need squats and deads for big glutes. So man, I power lifted, I've been squats and deads forever. And I still, my glutes are not as developed as they could be because my quads take over. I have a lot, a ton of quad development and glutes kind of lag. So you need to open your mind and think outside the box sometimes and, and be okay doing something different. I know a lot of these great guys, you know, they say, oh, Ronnie Coleman, he didn't do glute bridges and he has huge glutes. It's like, his genetically was gonna have huge glutes. He, he's, just from squatting and deadlifting was enough, but for other guys, it, it won't be. So you need to see what other exercises are out there and see what works and what you can feel doing. If squats, you don't feel it in your glutes, then you need to find a different exercise and change it. I'm gonna get into my first work set now. Last time I hit 405 for nine reps, so I'm just gonna stay the same way and see what I can get. If you're wondering why the plates are loaded so weird, look behind me. Renee's working out with me, so we have to use the 25 pound plates and just stack some 45s on top of it too, so that's why it is how it is. <laughs> That was, it was actually 415 since we were using the 25s, but I did it for nine reps. So, hell, 10 pound improvement. Um, and we'll go on to my second set. I dropped down to 365. The last time I hit it for 12 reps, try to hit that or, or beat it. Good to match 12 reps again. That's why it's important on prep to keep a logbook. So you come in here and you're exhausted, you know, as much energy, it does take more to fight for those reps. You can do them, but mentally, if you didn't have that written down, you might cut back a rep. If you keep doing that over weeks, and it can equate to more tissue loss. So from here, move on to stiff leg deadlifts. I'm more of a Romanian deadlift, actually. So for executing these stiff leg deadlifts, the, the main thing that we're doing is you just want rotation at the hip joint. So you're just going into hip flexion. Once you max out the length of the hamstrings, that's when you should come up. So for a lot of people, you see them come down, they start flexing the trunk, you start seeing that rounding in the lower back. You don't want to go. You don't want to be doing that. You want to keep the, the spine neutral. So I usually tell people to try it without weight, and you'll see the hamstring. You'll feel them tighten up, and that's as low as you should be going. So just control the centric. Come up and don't let the hips tuck underneath you, and start bringing more quad into the movement. But I'm just keeping like a, a soft knee, as I'd say. So just a slight bend in the knee, doing these, but not letting them bend any more as I'm coming down. Uh, this work set number one. Last time through this, did 425 for nine reps. So I'll try to hit that again or beat it.
right, so first set, I actually hit an ex extra rep that I, from last time. Drop back to 385. Last uh, rotation, I hit 12 reps. Let's see what I get. So second set on stiff leg deadlifts. I matched my ropes from last time. I'm gonna move on to the lying leg curl. Same set protocol, so I'll do a couple warm-ups. Then go up to two, two top sets of a eight to 10, and then like a 12 to 15 rep. So now moving on to do something with the knee flexion, so the other function of the hamstrings. So these lying leg curls, I keep my toes pointed. Plenty flexion just to the take some of the calf out of it because the gastrocnemius it crosses the knee joint so it does function in knee flexion so if you keep them loose and point them a little bit it'll take them out of it and keep more tension just on the hamstring alone um, really try to keep the hips pushed into the bench as well when you kick those those uh, hips up you see people doing that you're starting the movement with your lower back that's also sh uh, shortening your range of motion up too so that was my second set on lying hand curls uh, I went from 80 pounds, I dropped down to 60, and I hit 13 reps. And that'll be it for those, so I'm gonna move on to doing a cluster set of a wide stance leg press and 45 degree back raise. And the cluster set is just 60 second rest after each exercise. It's like a super set, so I'm going back and forth between the two, but I'm just taking a rest period so I can put more effort into each set. I, I like them, especially on prep, when you're getting more fatigued, it's hard to recover between sets. So I'd rather doing a super set, having no rest, just take a break, and then get a little bit of rest to go all, put more effort in to the next exercise. So this will be my first work set. We're gonna do three rounds of this. 30 reps in the, the wide stance, leg press, 15 reps in the 45 degree back press. All right, so these are my last two movements for hams and glutes. So I picked two. They're gonna hit hams and some glute. When we're working a little bit higher rep range, it just causes some more metabolic stress and give more, more pump. So I've done some heavy loading sets, so moving on to more pumping movements now. I like the wide stance leg press because it will hit adductors, but also getting some, some good tension and a full stretch state. Then moving on to a 45 degree back raise where I can get good tension at the um, at, at peak contraction. So just little differences there, but both hitting hams and glutes. On the uh, wide stance leg press, just make sure you, you know your feet are wide and high. Toes and knees should be traveling in the same direction. I try to do 30 reps continuously, trying not to take breaks. Um, going down knees to chest and just coming up maybe three quarters of the way. So I'm not trying to lock my legs out. And the 45 degree back raise. Trying just to get my glutes tight, and that's that's it. So I don't want to go into hyperextension. The back should stay neutral. And just come up and squeeze the glutes, and that's it.
So that's it for hams and glutes. I'm gonna move on to doing calves now. So for calves, doing donkey calf raise, 15 full reps, full range of motion, and 15 partials. So I'm just trying to build a ton of metabolic stress and just pump them. I'm just gonna do three work sets. To execute the lift, I'm doing just a control eccentric, and then a pause on the bottom. The pause is important because the, the tissue in the calf has a lot of stretch reflex, the connective tissue. So if you're going down and it's bouncing out of the bottom, that connective tissue can take a lot of the load and bring you back up with momentum. So you need to do a slight pause in the bottom to make sure you're using actual contractile tissue to lift the weight. That is all for hand and glutes and calves. Until next time. Well, that's it for this week, guys. Uh, again, thanks for all the support and tuning in. I, you know, I always appreciate any comments that y'all leave and just the continued encouragement to keep doing the prep, which which I am. But you know, seeing it all, it's encouraging to keep making these videos and getting them out for you. But if you ever want any more things for Matt and I to go over, please ask us. Leave in the uh, comments below. I'm also doing a, a IG live Q&A every Wednesday at 6 p.m. Central Standard Time. So and I post the topic the day before on my IG. So if you you know you want to ask me questions live, we can we can do that. Uh, for any coaching inquiries for me or Matt, I have all of our contact information below, and we will see you guys next week.